Hello everyone. I can see few of the hands raised. So if there are only questions, you can raise the hands. Otherwise, fine. We know all of you are present. Okay. Is that fine? Okay. So today's class is on general properties of nematodes. So this is going to be a very brief class. Okay. If there are any questions. Doubt cyclosanthic parasites, which causes infection in humans. There are estimated five. So you people might have seen earthworms, right? So to look this nematodes, all the earthworms are segmented, whereas nematodes are unsegmented worms, and they will have elongated and cylindrical uh, unsegmented worms with tapering ends. Okay, nematodes actually means thread-like. So they appear thread-like, so they are given the name nematode. Nema nematodes are free living form in the soil. I am now coming to the general characteristics. As you can see in the picture, they are cylindrical or filary form in shape. Okay, and these are bilaterally symmetrical with secondary triradiate symmetry at the anterior end. You can uh, uh, nematodes, I mean two worms in the picture. The left hand side one is the male worm and the right hand side is the female worm. And in the topmost bottom at the end you can see something called the mouth opening, right? So that is called as triradiate symmetry in the anterior end. And the size of and forms okay, uh, parasites. Males are generally smaller when compared to females, and the posterior end of the the male worm will be curved or coiled ventrally. So the first picture what you are seeing is a male worm. So you can see posterior end is curved and coiled. Body coming to the nematode. Uh, seal and all the visceral organs will be suspending in the. complete okay and else okay then these intestine will lead to Now coming to the reproductive system. In the first picture, for 
thing. Am I audible? Please type in the chat. Am I audible? Can you see the slide? I mean, screen sharing. Ma'am, you are audible, but screen sharing we can't see. Okay. No, can you see? No, can you see the slide? No, ma'am. You can't see? ओके <laughs> Okay. 
Can you see the slide now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ah, you can see, right? Okay. Are you clear till this slide, no? Right? One person, Gambir, you can answer to my question. Only you can unmute and uh, answer my question. No. So is it fine uh, if I start from this slide or you want me to start from the beginning? From previous slide, ma'am. Start from the previous slide. So this digestive system and reproductive system over, no? You want me to explain this? Right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So the nematodes will have a complete digestive system. Okay, digestive system. Now you can uh, mute yourself, Kambir. If anything is there, I will ask you people. And if any doubts are there, please rise. Or you can, uh, I mean, unmute. Only one that person can unmute and let me know if there is some disturbance. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, coming to the digestive system. So, in the, the uh, diagram, you can see the brown color structures, right? Inside the two worms. So, those that is the digestive system. In nematodes, the digestive system is complete. Anteriorly, you can see a mouth which leads to the esophagus. Okay, and then it continues to the intestine. Intestine will have a single layer of columnar epithelial cells. Okay, that intestine will lead to the rectum and which opens to the anus. Okay, in males, the opening for both the rectum and ejaculatory duct will open into a cloaca. That is the difference between male and female. Okay. Now coming to the, uh, I mean, nematodes will have a simple excretory and nervous system. And these nematodes are dioecious. That is, it means there will be two sexes, separate, male and female, like uh, in, in your any other parasites. Okay. Now coming to the reproductive system, uh, the males, the reproductive system in male is... Uh, uh, depicted in blue color okay in the first picture blue color thing is the reproductive system in the males it consists of a single tubule which is differentiated into testis vas difference seminal vesicle just called as spicules or bursa and in some it, there could be both so spicules and bursa okay now coming to the females, Okay, in the females, we have
there is some issue with the internet we are working it team is working on it okay i'll get back to you in two minutes Can you see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So we were here in the reproductive system. Now the females will consist of ovary. Okay, OV duct, seminal receptacles, uterus. Yes, all of you, please mute, and uh, you can only unmute when there is a problem. Okay, and it consists of these structures. Now coming to coming to the uh, females, female nematodes may produce three different types of Egg ones like some uh, nematodes can have uh, uh, can will lay eggs. Okay, they are called oviparous. Some directly lay larvae. They are called viviparous, and some lay eggs which contains fully formed larva. Okay, that is called ovoviviparous. This is very important. Okay, and uh, important classification you need to know. Okay, classification based on the pattern of egg uh, uh, ones laying. Okay. So now coming to the eggs, which is also called as oviparous. Examples for this is some will uh, produce unsegmented eggs. Examples for that are Ascaris lumbricoides and Trichuris trichura. And segmented eggs is produced by Ankylostoma duodenale and Nicator americanus. Eggs containing larva is produced by Entrobius. Okay, here it is not uh, fully developed. In entrobius, the larva, even though it contains larva, the larva is not fully developed. That's why it comes under oviparous. Now coming to viviparous, examples are you know, filari filarial worms, trichinella, and dracunculus. Okay, these lay uh, directly the larva. Now coming to o viviparous, here the nematodes. One second. Please mute yourself. Okay. So now uh, the example for OVO VV Paris includes stranguloids species. Okay. So I'm repeating again. We can classify it into OV Paris. VV Paris and OO VV Paris. Excuse me, ma'am. We cannot see the slide, ma'am. You cannot see the slide, ma'am. Ma That's what you people have to mute yourself. If you keep on disturbing, and once I go to mute all, it the screen sharing goes off. So kindly cooperate and everybody has to mute yourself. Can you see now? One person. Can you see? The problem in this is I cannot simultaneously look into your chat box. Okay, that's why I may not be able to uh, see if you put it in the chat box only Gambir will answer my questions. Rest all, please mute. 
Gambir, can you see the screen? Yes, ma'am. Now we can see, ma'am. Okay. You can see right now? Yes, ma'am. We can see now, ma'am. Okay. You please mute yourself. So now coming to the life cycle. The life cycle in nematode consists typically of four larval stages. Okay, it will have four larval stages and one adult adult form. So when uh, the larva passes from one stage to another stage, it will shed its cuticle in each step. Okay, man is the optimum host for all the nematodes, and they pass their life cycle in single host. Usually, in only one host, except there are some two super families like Phyloridia, where you have phylarial worms. Okay, in phylarial worms, you have two host. Man is the uh, definitive host, and your mosquito is the uh, intermediate host. Okay, uh, and the other super family is Dracunculidae. In this, you have Dracunculus medinensis, and here it will have two in uh, again two vectors. Uh, I mean two uh, hosts. One is human, and the other one is cyclops, which are present in the water. So except for these two super uh, families, rest all will have single host. Okay. Now coming to once they enter, okay, these nematodes will localize in the intestinal tract and they lay their eggs and this will pass out in the feces. Okay, now uh, some may also undergo development. Okay, when the larva is released, some of these larva can undergo development in the soil before entering into the host. Now coming to the modes of infection of uh, nematodes, mainly it is by ingestion of the eggs or the larva. Okay, soil gets contaminated by the infected uh, feces of the animals, and when these uh, this is ingested, so man is going to get infection. So by ingestion of eggs in case of Ascaris, Entrobius, Trichuris, Trichura. And larvae with intermediate host, like as I told you in dragon killers, the cyclops which contains the larva, if the, that the man drinks the un, this contaminated water, then he will get infect, infest, uh, infected with dragon killers medinensis. Then ancestor uh, larva in the muscles. In case of trichinella, uh, the trichinella adult worms are going to stay in the uh, muscles, okay, skeletal muscles. When the when the man ingests this undercooked meat, then he gets trichinella infection. So each of this will be dealt in your class separately in under each um, uh, nematode. It is just the broad categorization, okay. The mode of infection first is ingestion, and the second is penetration of the skin, like for your hookworms. Okay, they, they the man gets infected by penetration of the skin by the third stage larva. So example would be ankylostoma, which is also called as hookworm, necator, and strongyloides species. Then but uh, blood sucking insects like filarial worms. Okay, filariasis is caused by mosquitoes. Now coming to very rare cause by inhalation of dust containing eggs. Okay, there is something called larva i mean uh, 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 larva migrants okay so those things are caused by ascaris x uh, of ascaris and entrobius that i will be dealing in the later slides in detail okay this is a very rare cause okay inhalation of dust containing x so there are four modes ingestion uh, penetration blood sucking and inhalation of dust containing x so now coming to the Another classification based on the habitat. The habitat means where the adult worms are going to stay and lay their eggs, right? So based on the habitat, nematodes can be classified into intestinal nematodes and somatic nematodes, okay? Under intestinal, again, we can subclassify into small intestine and large intestine. So the habitat for the nematodes in small, small intestine includes Ascaris lumbricoids, Ankylostoma duodenale, and Necator americanus. Okay, these are all the parasites. Uh, it is like tongue twister, but you have to buy her these names. Okay, now coming to the large intestine, uh, intestine Trichuris trichura and Entrobius vermicularis uh, reside in large intestine. 
Now coming to somatic human nematodes, usually the filary forms, uh, worms are considered somatic and under that filarial worms again uh, few reside in lymphatics like in case of Ucheraria bronchopathy, Brugia malai, Brugia timori. These uh, reside in lympho, uh, lymphatics and lower lower Oncocerca, Mansonella streptocerca, Mansonella ozardi will stay in uh, will reside in skin, okay, and Mansonella persistens will uh, reside in serous cavity. Some of the other somatic uh, nematodes include Trichinella spiralis, as I have already told you, they, the habitat here is skeletal muscle, and then Rachenculus medinensis, which is also called as Guinea worm. And there are very rare uh, nemat animal nematodes which rarely infect man. Here the mans will act as an accidental host. Okay, So these things we, can, we will discuss again in the larva migrants. Okay, Examples everything. So now one classification was based on how the parasite is going to lay their egg ones. OO paras, VV paras, OO VV paras. The second classification is based on habitat. And the third classification is based on the systemic classification or the zoological classification. This I'm stressing because it can be asked in your uh, exam questions. Okay, classification of nematodes. There are three different types. Now the third one is systemic classification. Here the nematodes belong to phylum Nematelminthes. Okay, this can be <coughs> under class. This can be divided into two subclasses. Okay based on the presence of phasmids it is not plasmids it is phasmids which are caudal receptors okay they can be classified into two subclasses one is class adenophoria and the other one is class serentia okay so serentia now coming to the characteristic features of class adenophoria here they will have they will not have Fastmates or the sensory structure, okay, and the esophagus is modified with presence of gland cells or the reserve organs, and in the excretory systems, adenophoria uh, will not have any lateral canals, caudal papillae will be absent, and the infective form is first stage larva, okay, it is very important. Here, the infective uh, form will be first stage larva. Now, coming to class Cesarentia. Here it will have flasmates. Esophagus will have normal as appearance as we discussed in our general characteristics. And these will have lateral canals as part of their excretory organs. Caudal papilla will be there. And the most important one here the infective form for the definitive host is third stage larva. Okay. So these are the three different types of classifications. So this is a very crowded slide here again same adenophoria subclass and cesarentia you can see under adenophoria you have two family trichinellidia and trichuridia under trichinellidia you have trichinella spiralis under under trichuridia you have trichuris trichura and capillaria philippines capillaria aerophila and capillaria hepatica okay under Cesarentia, uh, you have five different families. Okay, under Strongyloidae, you have Strongyloidae stercoralis. Under Ankylostomidae, you have Ankylostoma duodenal and uh, Nicator americanus. And under Meta Strongyloidae, you have Angio Strongylus uh, cantonensis. Okay, under Ascaridae, you have Ascaris lumbricoids, and under Anisakidae, you have Anisakis simplex. Okay, under family Oxyuridae, you have Entrobius vermicularis. Okay, under family Oncocercidae, you have Ucheraria bronchofti, Brugia malai, Dirofilariae conjunctivae, uh, Loa loa and Monsonella persistens and Monsonella ozardi. Under Draconcularia, you have Draconclus medinensis and under Gnathostomidae, you have Gnathostoma species. So this is the, these are the various species you are going to come across again in your individual classes. 
so this was about your classifications general uh, characteristics of the nematodes and in nematodes you have one uh, specific thing called characteristic features called larva migrants okay so again this is a exam point of uh, question for you larva migrants okay what what does larva migrant means here usually as we discussed in our life cycle nematodes have to go through different uh, various uh, tissues in the human body in an organized pattern right sometimes these larvae lose their way and wander aimlessly so that time it produces something called larva migrants okay it has to go in the same pattern in the same route but sometimes the larvae wander somewhere else okay and lose their way so that time it produces larva migrants so the reasons for this larva migrants could be two one is if human gets infected with non human species okay in that case this uh, nematodes will be unable to undergo normal development okay and complete its life cycle so the, these larvae are going to wander aimlessly and in another uh, situation it could be because of strong immune response from the humans that time again uh, this uh, uh, immune response is going to prevent normal progression of the infections so this could be two reasons why larva migrants can occur and there are two types of larva migrants okay one is cutaneous larva migrants and the other one is visceral larva migrants in cutaneous larva migrants which is also called as creeping eruption usually in this larva will migrate under the skin or the subcutaneous tissue whereas in larval uh, visceral it as the name suggest it take place migration takes place in the viscera so as you can see in the picture here in the foot under the skin you can see some worm like thread like structure right in the feet in the foot so that is the an example of cutaneous larva migrants here it is an usg picture down so where you can see visceral larva migrants okay some of the examples of uh, nematodes which can cause cutaneous larva migrants include the important uh, non human uh, ankylostoma species in include ankylostoma brasiliensis ankylostoma canium caninum ankylostoma celi uh, celanicum and uh, the rare causes include gnathostoma species okay and uh, occasionally some human species can also cause uh, cutaneous larva migrants uh, examples would be strongloides tercularis ankylostoma duodenale and necator americanus and uh, sometimes due to non helminthic agents like hypoderma species and gastrophilus can also cause uh, cutaneous larva migrants the etiological uh, agents for visceral larva migrants i will explain in my further slide so these are some of the examples of cutaneous larva migrants that you should again by heart okay uh, now coming to the pathogenesis of cutaneous larva migrants host here natural host here would be cats okay and humans act as an accidental host here the infective stage would be third stage of uh, filariform larva mode of transmission is mainly through the penetration of the skin okay uh, the pathogenesis as already discussed man is an unnatural host so they can neither develop these nematodes can neither develop further nor migrate to the intestine instead they wander in the superficial layers of the skin of the feet leg thigh buttock and back and provoke allergic reaction in the previously sensitized patients that can lead to the now coming to various uh, clinical uh, features of the cutaneous larva migrants so these wandering and produce provoking an allergic reaction may lead to five different clinical features like ground itch okay which is uh, pruritic maculopapular dermatitis and rashes then the second one is larval larva currents where the migrating strongloides larva produce pathognomonic Uh, serpiginous articarial rash near the legs it is also called as uh, larva currents okay uh, currents itch 
okay it is called the another name for the same thing now the third clinical feature would be low flux lens syndrome uh, here it occurs in one fourth of the cases here patients the larva will migrate to the uh, lungs and produce pneumonitis the patients will have eosinophilia basically all that uh, features of um, pneumonitis uh, the person will present okay it is called as low flux syndrome then the fourth one is creeping meiosis it is caused by the flies of the genus hypoderma now uh, then the ectopic infection with fasciola and paragonimus may produce creeping lesions in the on the abdominal wall now coming to the lab diagnosis uh in cutaneous larva migraines eosinophilia will be very rare there are not many serological tests available to detect cutaneous larva migraines and even on the skin biopsy uh, it is very rare to find larval uh, larva okay in the skin biopsy uh, only now diagnosis is possible and mainly it is because of the clinical diagnosis clinical identification okay of those uh, each tracks and all those things you can uh, readily see the larva sometimes now coming to the treatment the uh, treatment of choice here would be oral and topical thiobendazone okay and sometimes the freezing the advancing end of the creeping eruption by ethyl ethyl brom bromide is also tried now coming to visceral larva migraines here it is caused by migration of larva of non human species okay that infect here the mode of transmission is through oral route ingestion of the infected egg by oral route whereas in your cutaneous it is mainly because of the penetration of the larva now coming to the etiology the most commonest cause is toxocora uh, toxocara canis which is the important uh, uh, cause and the less important one would be toxocara catis okay uh, in toxocara canis the definitive host will be a uh, dog in catis it is uh, catis it is cats now the other less important one would be anisakis here it is a parasite of marine uh, marine species nathostoma spinigerum angel uh, angio strongulus strongulus cantonensis okay these are the different non human species where are there are some uh, human nematodes also like ankylostoma uh, deer uh, uh, ascaris lumbricoides and uh, strongyloides stercoralis uh, these are the two human nematodes which uh, sometimes they get lost into ectopic sites so this uh, ankylos uh, ascaris lumbricoides is the one which is the most commonest cause of uh, low flux syndrome which i mentioned in the other this thing so this can act as when they go when these larva go into the ectopic sites then they can produce these visceral larva migraines now coming to the pathogenesis so the soil is going to get contaminated by the uh, dog and cat feces which contains these infective eggs and when the man accidentally ingests these eggs these eggs will travel to the intestine and penetrate the gut wall and migrate to the liver most commonly and uh, apart from the liver it can also migrate to lungs brains and eyes to produce Uh, the various features and in the humans they will not develop into adults but induce local granuloma tissues wherever they are entering whichever viscera they are entering they are going to produce local granuloma lesions which in turn cause local tissue damage coming to the clinical features of visceral larva migraines here the children are most commonly affected naturally because uh, they are the ones who are going to play in the soil and eat the mud and all those things during playing so the most common uh, affected age group would be children and they may present with fever hepatomegaly pneumonitis hyperglobulinemia pica depending on the site involved and sometimes if it is uh, there is an uh, if there is new uh, neural larva migraines they might present with uh, neurological manifestations and op- ophthalmic larva migraines they can present with endophthalmitis here we can see marked 
uh, leukocytosis with persistent eosinophilia. Again, this is a uh, classical differentiation between your cutaneous larva migrants and visceral larva migrants. In cutaneous, you will not, you probably might not see eosinophilia, whereas in your visceral larva migrants, it is one of the characteristic feature. You will have persistent eosinophilia. Now come to the lab diagnosis. There are some serological tests like uh, passive hemagglutination test, pentonite flocculation, and microprecipitation, and ELISA. ELISA is the most specific uh, sensitive test for toxocariasis. Okay. Whereas in your cutaneous, you mainly rely on your clinical uh, diagnosis. In visceral uh, larva migraines, at least you have few tests like ELISA for your lab diagnosis. Now coming to the treatment, the, uh, the treatment of choice here would be diethyl carbamazine, which is given in a dosage of 100 milligram TDS for three weeks. Okay, apart from this, thiabendazole is also tried and prednisolone also can be given to minimize inflammatory response. Okay, so now coming to prophylaxis, deworming the household pets like cats and dogs, which in turn will limit the soil contamination. This is the only method of prophylaxis. Now coming to some of the differences, this has already been dealt. So in cutaneous larva migrants, tissue involved would be skin, whereas in your visera, there are various uh, visceral organs which are infected. Infecting organisms used mostly by non-human nematodes, Okay, and in visera, it is mainly by the dog and cats because of Toxocara species. Portal of entry here in the cutaneous is penetration of the skin, whereas in visera, it is because of the ingestion of infected eggs. Eosinophilia you might or might not see in cutaneous, whereas it is persistently high in visceral migrants. Zero diagnosis not developed much, whereas it is developed, you can use ELISA in case of visceral larva migrants for demonstration of toxocara antibodies. Now coming to treatment, uh, uh, treatment of choice in cutaneous would be thiabendazole, whereas DEC and prednisolone is used in case of visceral larva migrants. Okay, this is about your general introduction to uh, nematodes you here you have to remember classification three different types of classification and you should be able to write uh, larva migrants okay along with the examples for your um, for five marks special okay thank you any doubts Nitish Kumar has raised his hands. Any doubts, Nitish Kumar? You can unmute yourself and ask. Whoever has raised your hands, if you have any doubts, you can unmute and ask. Okay, we have five more minutes. Don't leave the class. I have to take the attendance. Okay. Whoever has raised hands, uh, next is Raghuram, Isha Dahamad. Raising hand means you have doubts. Okay, it is not attendance. Any doubts? Okay, don't log out. I haven't taken the attendance yet. If there are no doubts, I will take the attendance. Thank you, everyone. Wait for two minutes. After that, you can uh, leave the class.
Okay, thank you everybody. You can leave the class now if there are no doubts.